I think mom was singing along. And there's lots more where that came from. We could be here probably till nine o'clock tonight hearing them sing. You have no idea what it's like growing up in a, a Cessnick or Vankovich or Fulton or Johnson household. Lots of singing. Many songs we hear many times. Anyway, um, I'd like to invite up now a couple more of the grandchildren um, from the Cessnick family, that's our family, and from the Nickel family. And uh, my nephew Lincoln will also give a charge to the congregation today uh, after my son Winston says a few words. Hi, everybody. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am Winston. And for those who saw our newsletter this year, I am the favorite nephew in the Johnson clan. <laughs> Not at all self-proclaimed. Um, for those who knew my grandmother, um, they knew her as, you all would know her as a woman of many gifts. And I'm sure if we haven't, we'll hear more about all of those today. But uh, while others share more of those great memories of the things she's excelled at, you know, I, I, I would like to take some time to share some of the things she might not have actually been the best at. Um, first, being the cool and hip woman she was, um, she always seemed to have the newest tech. The only problem being that she couldn't work any of it. <laughs> the ideal example of this would be when the first iPhone came out, as she found herself owning the device within the first week. But it quickly became apparent she knew nothing about it. In fact, she couldn't even remember what it was called, and from then on it often became dubbed the Goofbox. The whole concept of an iPhone, for those who know, um, is simplicity, hence why on the whole phone there is only one switch, and the function of that switch has not changed in 13 years. Yet, I could always call on a call, I always count on a call once a month from Grandma, saying, Winston, my phone isn't making any noises. And so I'd say, well, is it on vibrate, Grandma? And she'd go, no, it's, it's not vibrating. And <laughs> I'd, I'd say, okay, well, can you please flip the switch on the side of the phone? And she'd just give a big sigh, and she'd go, Come on, you know I have no idea how to work this thing. Someone is going to come, have to come over here and fix it for me. And, but looking back, it, it seems like it was all one big ploy to get people to come visit her. <laughs> uh, another thing she may not have been best at was listening to the orders of her daughters, especially when it came to depriving her of the things she enjoyed. So example I think that comes to mind of that would be uh, I remember a few years ago I'd gone over to visit grandma and she had wanted some eggs and I'd, when I asked how many she'd like she without pause said oh just cook the whole carton <laughs> and you know I was slightly shocked but you know I was hungry too so if I'm a growing boy feeling obliged I cooked the whole thing and when it was all finished cooking I put them on a big plate and left her to serve herself while I went to get the phone that was ringing uh, I picked up the phone around the corner and it ended up being my mom Carolyn who asked uh, you know, what are you guys up to? And so I told her, we were about to eat some eggs. And she yelled, no, the doctor literally just told her this week she's off eggs because her cholesterol is too high. <laughs> <laughs> but by the time I jumped around the corner, um, I looked into Grandma's eyes, who had what looked like her tenth spoonful of egg ready to go in her mouth, <laughs> and the most rebellious smirk I've ever seen on her face, <laughs> as, as if she'd known exactly who called and why. <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, uh, While well, technological prowess may not be her legacy, um, her evangelical spirit, humble servanthood, and proud love to your Jesus will be. Um, as Christian nowadays, we often find ourselves wearing two different identities, what seems to be our Sunday demeanor and the face we put on to please society. But Grandma knew she found her identity in Jesus Christ and had no problem sharing the gospel with anyone at any time, and she was great at it. Whether it was through her patient listening ear, her Mary K Mary Kay sales, or the large groups she had over for meals or sing songs, some of which I heard were far over the building code limit, Grandma found a way to intertwine the gospel in every aspect of her life. And I know I speak for all the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren now when I say she will forever be our role model in her selfless care for others and her unwavering will to share the good news with them. Thanks for coming, guys.
Well, it's an amazing time that we can celebrate here the life of, of, of Grandma Margaret, someone who we love so much. And just looking around the room right now, it's, it's so apparent that she had so many people touch her lives and she was able to touch the lives of so many people as well. And she brings joy to my, my own and my family's heart. Just like looking at the smile on Grandma's face right, right, right beside us here. And she, uh, she brought that everywhere she went. And, and that's something that I think we can all remember her by. And um, the fact that she was a, a beautiful God-fearing woman who, um, whose life is, it's an, it's an incredible privilege to be able to be here and celebrate her life and, and, and walk from here knowing that uh, we, we have the, the privilege of joining a journey that, that Jesus enjoys, uh, jo- invites us to, sorry, um, of living for him and, and following him and committing our lives to him and being fishers of men, just like grandma was an amazing fisher of men to everyone she, she met, like the, the woman that Lexi was talking about. Or, or ever, like we've all seen Grandma go to work, and it's it's incredible the way that she loved Jesus was, was second to none. Um, uh, a couple a couple stories come to to mind right away, just how how unique Grandma was, how how she she loved like interesting things. I mean, a lot of a lot of grandmas love love knitting. Um, but that was one thing. I think she just kind of hopped on board for a period of time, and I just remember she she made a little bit of a crusade out to the West Coast. Uh, I think a crusade for a couple things. One was a crusade to obviously bring the word of God to her grandchildren out there, but at the same time, I think it was a crusade to teach us how to knit. Um, and I was definitely pretty reluctant at first, but she definitely convinced me that it's, it's, it's cool for men to knit. So, um, so she welcomed me to the club, and uh, I remember one day I was, I was playing road hockey, and I come in and like all my gears, I was, I was goalie at the time, so I had like my big pads on, and I, and I come into the house, and Grandma's like, okay, the guys are, we're, we're meeting up, so I'm like, okay. And uh, we're sitting on the couch, and she's, like, teaching us to knit. And I think it's, like, the best possible environment to, like, do ministry because your hands are tied up with this yarn, and you can't get away. So she just kind of goes off. And unfortunately, unfortunately uh, a good part of this, this story that has lived on besides her teaching to us is the picture my mom took of me and shares to everyone. So, <laughs> um, but of those things that Grandma taught, between knitting the word of God, definitely the word of God was something that um, she, she taught first and foremost. And it was incredible to see the way that she just loved us and, and taught us to love God with all our heart, all our soul, our mind, and all our strength and trust in the plan that he has for us. We'd always make trips to Vancouver on her trips out west. And uh, as much as I think that it was incredible for us to be able to spend time with our grandma, learn to just who she is, learn her stories, ask her questions, and, and, and for her to share her wisdom with us. It was, it was always a cool opportunity because we saw her in our community, and she didn't change from her, her life here to her life there or anyone she met. She was always, always looking for opportunity and always doing kind of what, what we're called to, of, of caring for those around us. And, and when I think of um, caring for those who are down and lowly or, or, or caring for those on the outside, like when, if we were walking downtown Vancouver, her, her first response wouldn't necessarily be to, like, oh, Lincoln, like, let's go, like, let me treat you with this or something. It's, hey, like, this is a, a, maybe a homeless person on the street. Let's go talk to them. Let's find time with them. And, like, for, for her to leave that example to us, to everything that she did, she was about serving and loving and caring. And she brought that into everywhere that she went. She, 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 um, she went. And I can't remember who, who said it this past week while I was spending some time with, in Ontario before, uh, before she passed away, but... Like, everyone that she met, I know I experienced this myself, but everyone that she met felt the love that she had for them. Like, everyone felt the love that Grandma Margaret had for them and how that love was just a reflection of Christ's love for us and how, how on a, just a greater multitude that, that, that love that Jesus Christ has for us. The Bible says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Today there's an aspect of, of, of mourning, but there's also an aspect of of being overwhelmingly comforted by a loving father, someone who cares for us and is meeting us where we're at. We're feeling down and low. There's, he's, he's standing right beside me. He's sitting with us in the, in the, in the congregation, and, and, and Grandma's with Jesus right now. She's, she's celebrating with us right now. Like, there's an aspect that we can just, just put our hands up and say, Hallelujah, like, here we go. <laughs> Grandma's up there right now celebrating with us. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, verses 16 to 18 says, so we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away. Our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. 
For as we look not to these things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. I just think of what, the way that grandma lived was, she was always sharing about the things that are unseen, the beauty in that, the light that comes through that. When we think about the, the light and the joy that was in Grandma Margaret, like, like that light is like offered to us. Like it's an amazing gift, the fact that, that we have that offered to us in that way. And even in the last couple of years, some of you may know, Grandma obviously had certain health concerns, certain things that were coming up, and, and all throughout that time, her response was never to grumble, never to complain at the things that life was throwing at her. And like sometimes I wonder, like, how is that even possible? Like the, thing, the things that, it's just, there's always a sense of joy, always a sense of, of, of life and light that was in her, like that same smile that we've seen so many times. And her response was always, thank you, Jesus, for what I have. It would be more prayer to her family and friends and more wanting to seek, seek community with those around her. There's, there's a different motivation. It always turned into thanksgiving and to praise. And like we can today, we can give thanks to God for the incredible blessing that Grandma was today. And, and we can celebrate God's faithful servant and a job well done for, for her life and, and celebrate where she's at now. And, and I can definitely say Grandma was truly a selfless woman wherever she went. Like it wasn't about who who she could make herself out to be. If she was given a platform, that platform was, was to share who Jesus was with people and share his love with people, share the life, the eternal life that comes through, through committing our lives to following him. One, one of our, our grandchildren already said it, but, but just that aspect of, of, of making fishers of men, how grandma was so gifted in that. And, and Jesus says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men.